what we get in chapter 9 is Lanyon's uh, version of events as written and described by him in a letter. And for me, this is really um, one that shows that difference in science. Um, Jekyll's versus Lanyon's. Lanyon's being the more traditional Um, whereas Jekyll's is somewhat mystical and uh, playing with ideas of good and evil, whereas Lanyon, you'll see, is, is very precise and measured. So Jekyll had asked, written him to ask him to go get the chemicals um, required of him from his cabinet and uh, brought it along, and a gentleman would come at midnight to pick it up, and that would be Hyde. And Lanyon was a little bit frightened uh, or just apprehensive about this person, so he came armed. Um, uh, so then, are you, are you come from Dr. Jekyll? He told me yes by a constrained gesture, and when I bid him enter, he did not obey me without a searching backward glance in the darkness of the square. There was a policeman not far off advancing with his bullseye open, and at that sight I thought my visitor started to make greater haste. So here we get that fear of police. Again, that menacing, looking over his shoulder, uh, a frightened of the law. And our speaker, Lanyon, says he brings him into the bright light almost to expose him. Uh, and he's ready uh, because he's frightened. He doesn't know what this person could do. He doesn't know who he is. He could, he could hurt him at any time. So he's got a gun on him. And then it's, it's what he looks like that really uh, is amazing. And his observations, his observations are really acute. He's, he notices he was small and he had a shocking expression of his face. Uh, great muscular activity and debility of constitution. So he was strong, but actually unable. And... Then, a very interesting phrase, subjective disturbance caused by his neighborhood. Being around him, causes unease. And Lanyon, such a scientist, he's noticing with these precise details, these differences, these changes. Um, and he's wondering if he's suffering from something. So he's taking all this as symptoms, but now on reflection, but have since had reason to believe, because he knows more, the cause to lie much deeper in the nature of man and turn on some nobler image than the principle of hatred. So inside of us is this evil, and this evil Jekyll has been able to externalize in the form of Mr. Hyde, and it's this that makes Hyde so disgusting and uh, his deformity so uh, upsetting to those around him. And here we get Lanyon really trying to understand or figure out what's going on. Um, and he, again, like a true scientist, he has a disgustful curiosity. He's repulsed and drawn to figure out what it is. And he... He is struck by what most of us would be struck by, I think, were we to see Hyde, is his, he's a very he's, he's small uh, and his clothes are overfitting. And that's because when you transform, it seems, from good to evil, the evil faculty being used less, Jekyll explains in chapter 10, that's what makes you smaller. In most of the movie versions of this book, it's uh, one where he becomes larger, Hyde, the more vicious creature. Whereas in the book, it's, it's the opposite. Hyde is, something, Hyde is someone who shrinks down and becomes more menacing and destructive in this smaller dwarfish um, way. Uh, strange to relate, this ludicrous accoutrement was far from moving me from laughter. He looks ridiculous, but it isn't funny. It's, um, it's deformed frightening, uh, abnormal, look at this triplet, seizing, surprising, revolting, it's, it's, it's terrifying.
terrifying. Uh, and what you see is Lanyon really wanting to figure out where this creature or this person has come from, what's its origin, and what's his connection to, uh, to Jekyll. And what he discovers is something that, that utterly distorts and changes him forever.